When Catherine and Jay bought their first house, it was just the two of them. Then they had Henry, then George. Now they're running out of space. They need a bigger house, but they can't afford it. An income suite could change all that, but they need help. Catherine and Jay bought their first house five years ago for $220,000. Now their mortgage payments are only $750 a month, but this house is getting too small for their growing family. In order to make the next step, they need to get the most out of this house. So we need to add an income suite to help them gain equity. So are you guys finding that this house is really challenging with regards to the space? Yes. Yeah, it's a challenge right now, especially with George, because we've lost our TV room and our office. I feel, I feel like we're getting closed in every day. Well, this uh, room used to be my office slash the den. And where do you do that work now? We have an office in the front hall. You have an office room. in the front hall. We have yeah, a table and our computer in the front hallway. <laughs> yeah, and all the boxes and all the stuff from this room is, has been everywhere in the house. So now we have boxes and boxes of books stuffed in every nook and cranny in the house. And the baby sleeps in here with you? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And all the baby's furniture as well to deal with the baby. The change table, the cradle. His dresser next his to our dresser. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's, it's a great house, but you guys have a lot of stuff and a growing family. Yeah. You're kind of bursting at the seams. Yeah. And this, there, this is the living room. Living room slash TV room and, uh, and toy room. Oh yeah. All the relaxation, all the kids playing, all the entertaining has to happen in here now. Multi-purpose room. Okay. Wow. Wow, wow. Stop saying that. Wow. I think the best word is wow. This is a big laundry room. And it's now kind of a junkyard. We've been going through everything and throwing things out. So you can see this is all the stuff that's going out. I definitely see a lot of challenges in this basement. There's no washroom. There's a shared laundry issue. And again, we're gonna have to move a lot of stuff around. A lot of cleanup work needs to be done. This is fine for an unfinished basement, but if we're gonna finish the basement, we can't have these hanging down. If all this was moved out of the way, we can put our elbow in here, keep this drain in the bulkhead all the way across here. That's a big job. And, and now you've got a level ceiling though. Like how much cleaner is that? Well, this is where the floor gets really bad. Did you guys try to hide this from me? <laughs> what do you think needs to happen to the floor? The challenge isn't so much the fact that the floor is uneven, it's the fact that the floor is uneven and we're already at our max ceiling height. I want to try to work with this, this ceiling height. So we chip down the high spots and hope that uh, we come in underneath the ceiling clearance. Potential-wise though, it's here. There's a separate entrance. The house lends itself to having a basement apartment. It's already been closed off to the upstairs. Uh, it's really a waste and it's a real shame to leave this sitting here. There's a few scenarios. If you come and turn it into an income suite and the week after that we see the perfect house on the market, then we'll sell it and somebody else can rent it out. Right. right? Yes. Yeah. Or if we um, don't see any houses that look at all affordable, renting it out would be a way for us to increase the amount of savings we have to buy a more expensive house. What I will do is I will take that budget into consideration and my measurements and your floor plan and I'll come up with the best possible options. And I'll let you guys make the decision. All right? Sounds good. All right. Thanks for letting me in the dungeon. It was really fun. I'm going to throw out my socks when I get home. <laughs> Catherine and Jay are a well-educated couple with a dual-income family. They're both professors, and they're still struggling in this market. So this idea of the income suite is a perfect way for them to get what they need and be able to afford it. You guys bought this house five years ago for $220,000 you have put a significant down payment on the house, keeping your mortgage payments nice and low at $750 a month. Now your house has appreciated, 
but so has the rest of the neighborhood. The best way to outperform this market is to put in an accessory apartment. I've come up with two options, and ultimately you guys will have to make the decision which one you want. Option one is a bachelor apartment with shared laundry. That means the entrance is a shared entrance between yourselves and the tenants, and you both have access to a laundry room. The tenant can then carry on through a secured door into their bachelor apartment. Right off the entrance will be their washroom, a kitchen, and then the remainder of the square footage is dedicated to a bachelor style apartment. Very open concept. There isn't really enough room to close off a bedroom. The only thing left to do is to secure the utility room in the back with the furnace and hot water heater. We have to close that in. Now this apartment would bring in about $650 a month. The price tag though is about $35,000. But the real kicker here is that your mortgage payment is only $750 a month. Now you're gonna have $650 of that covered. You're gonna be paying 100 bucks a month, which allows you to save more money. Option two is a one bedroom basement apartment. The entire basement is dedicated to the tenant. There's no shared laundry anymore. So the tenant has their own entrance. They come in. The bathroom's a little bit larger. We've put the stackable washer dryer in there for them. The kitchen layout is similar, but because we've gained extra room, we were able to put one bedroom in, which is more attractive to somebody who's looking to rent. They now have a separate area for entertaining and a separate area for a bedroom. The price tag is still the same. It's still a $35,000 renovation. The advantage to this is that this apartment would bring in about $850 a month, which pays for your entire mortgage, plus an extra $100 a month. The sacrifices in this case are that you need to find somewhere to put laundry upstairs for yourselves. This means foregoing some more room and some additional expenses for electrical and plumbing. Now we have to decide. Now you have to make a decision because I've got everybody lined up ready to go. Okay. Both are fantastic options, but the decision's ultimately yours. Both fantastic options. They both have the same price tag. Option one is a bachelor apartment with shared laundry. Option two is a one bedroom basement apartment. The entire basement is dedicated to the tenant. There's no shared laundry anymore. Now we have to decide. Now you have to make a decision. Are you willing to sacrifice more of your home to get more money? Or are your needs more important and you're willing to make less money on the apartment in the basement? But the decision's ultimately yours. We are going to pick number one. Yeah, option one. Option one, the bachelor apartment. With the shared laundry. The shared With the laundry. shared laundry. Right. There's two big advantages. One is that you don't have to put a washer and dryer upstairs, right? And then the other big advantage is there is a little bit of storage space there, right? Space. Like we're a bit desperate in the yeah, storage because space. Because with a tenant, we would need yeah. the storage space. Perfect, perfect decision. I love starting with an unfinished basement, but it's difficult to imagine the final product. Currently, Jay and Catherine's basement is one big open space. Their new basement will start with a foyer leading to the shared laundry facilities and the entrance to the rental suite. Believe it or not, this is where the kitchen will stand. The ductwork and lighting will be relocated to give us good head clearance. These floors will be leveled so we can lay ceramic tiles and laminate flooring. All the finishes will be professionally done and this apartment will significantly increase the value of the home. Catherine and Jay picked option one, a bachelor apartment with shared laundry. It's gonna cost about 35 grand, but the finished apartment will raise the value of their home by about $70,000. That doubles the return on their investment. We have a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, so we have a lot of manpower here. We've broken up the floors, taken out the old windows, we're working on the electrical and the HVAC. We ran into some do-it-yourself problems with the electrical. You've got to be kidding me. We ran an extension cord through. Well, there's a real danger with uh, extension cords is that it heats up, and in the insulation, it, the insulation holds the heat in. So this would start a fire? Yes, it will start a fire. Okay, can we get rid of it? Yeah, we are. Thank you. It's completely unacceptable to have fire hazards, especially when you have an accessory apartment here. You're responsible for these people and yourselves. There's really no cutting corners. Catherine and Jay, I don't think have any idea how much work is actually going into their basement. I mean, we're doing a massive renovation. We have you know, 50 people booked over the next six days. I was planning to get 
tons of work done working through the night non-stop and there's no way they're going to survive through that with two young kids. They, they can't stay here. Before you go away for the week, I want you to see what we've accomplished. It's like the reveal before the reveal. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow, that's big changes already. We br pretty much moved everything. We broke open the floor with the jackhammer this morning, dug it out, laid all new pipe, that's all done. Done. And we took down all the mismatch of plumbing yeah. and just ran it straight and properly. We moved all the ductwork over, yeah. right? Remember, this was in the middle of the room. And then the cold air return was over here. Right. So in order to just make the whole place feel open, maximize the space, give us enough headroom, everything got shifted over. Now, there is a head height issue here. And what we did is we moved it over as far as we could. So there's going to be a bit of a design challenge into what we're going to do with this space because it is a head hazard to have something this low, especially once we have the floors in and then once we've drywalled around this, put the bulkhead in. Hi. Jerome's the contractor who's uh, helping me get through this project. I'm going to kick you guys out before they start any more work and have a good week away. And when you come back, you're going to see some major changes. Thank More major guys. than just we did today. Thank yeah. you. Wow. Well, we're going to get away from here. <laughs> Fast. We don't want the baby to be near the dust, and we want to just get away and uh, come back and imagine it'll be quite a bit different. But, I mean, if they can do this <laughs> in one day, imagine what they could do in a week, right? Now, I don't want to put added pressure on, but I, what are the odds of us having this done before they get back next Saturday? <laughs> we'd, have quite a bit, we'd have quite a bit done, but I don't know about all of it. It's still quite a bit left, you know? All right. Toronto. What are the odds of us having this done before they get back next Saturday? We'd have quite a bit done, but I don't know about all of it. Like when you get in into the finishing of ceramic tiles and the flooring. Yeah, this is going to take some clever work. My main concern is that Jay and Catherine are supposed to be leaving town tonight and we're being hit with this huge snowstorm. I'm afraid that if they don't leave shortly, that they're not going to be able to go and they're going to be stuck here during the entire renovation. We have you know, 50 people booked over the next six days and there's no way they're going to survive through that with two young kids. Jay and Catherine are away for the whole week. So while they're gone, we're going to try to get all the dirty work done. We finished framing, and now the electrician and plumber are finishing their work so we can get the inspections passed tonight. Once that's done, we're going to put in the sound and fire insulation and start drywalling this place. It's not going to go. You got to stand it up. It is? Um, no. <laughs> Now, we have a problem with the drywall coming down the stairs. So I think what we could do is if we cut back to this joist here, then we could just cut off this area. What'd you guys do here? We're gonna have to cut this out and get drywall downstairs. Oh, man. We gotta put new flooring here afterwards, then. really wanted today to go a little smoother. We got a little problem outside. I would have been a little more confident that we'd be done before they got home. We wanted a three-piece shower, like where the, the bases base, separate. The door and the sides. They sent us a one-piece shower that cannot be separated. It's all one-piece fiberglass. Come on. So even if we try to flip it on the sides or anything, can't get it through the windows. Wow, this is tight. Are you in? No, no, he's not in yet. It's not going to go. There's no way. So I've called off the plumber for the rest of the afternoon uh, because he won't be able to install it. All right, let's pull her back out. So what's plan B? Well, plan B is to phone him now and see if they could ship another one out for us to tomorrow. This sucks. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be cutting it very close at this point. Well, we've done everything we can to get a replacement shower here as soon as possible. But in the meantime, we need to move on. Jay and Catherine are still on vacation, and we've made a lot of progress. We finally passed all our inspections, and now I want to close up these walls. 
In order to do that, I put the rock saw in between, which is our sound insulation. Then we're going to 5 8 drywall both sides, which is going to create a fire barrier between the two apartments. Now the rock saw has two purposes. Number one, it dampens the sound okay, by filling the cavity between the joists. And number two, it gives us 10 more minutes of fire separation. This is our fire code right here. 45 minutes of fire separation in this sheet of 5 8 drywall. Okay? That means that if the fire starts down here, it's going to take 45 minutes to penetrate the drywall, and then we get another 10 minutes from the rock salt for a total of 55 minutes of fire separation between the two units. Hi. Hey, welcome home. Hi, Scott. Hi. How are you doing? We're doing very well. You guys have a good trip? Yeah, it was great. We're almost done. We're on track. Coming downstairs to help? Perfect. I might actually have to borrow some of these tools. We got a little more painting to do, clean up the fire doors, door hardware, get the countertops in, get the kitchen in. This harder color or? That's weird. Is this all the base cabinets? Yeah, that's it. There should be one more at least. Where's the sink and what goes in the corner? There's got to be a corner unit. We need to look at the floor plan again. No. There should be one more at least. We're at a bit of a standstill with the um, assembly the of the kitchen. Is this all the base cabinets? Yeah, that's it. There should be one more at least. Where's the sink? We find the extra cabinets. Yeah, John's got them. So, so, that should... so this There's one goes. Yeah, that's fine. That doesn't matter. This guy goes over here. Everything's okay. Everything's good, Scott. <laughs> Joey, you can come out of the corner, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's the closet. Closet. What about the shower? Done. It's in there. We got a three-piece the other day. No problem, obviously. And it's the exact same size, so we just kept the doors. We haven't been in the basement for quite a while, so it'd be nice to go down there just to see how good it looks. Like, there's going to be a huge difference. The floor and the, the finishings and the kitchen. It'd just be great to see it all together. Jay and Catherine are very typical homeowners. They're ready to make a step into a bigger house, and they're not sure what to do to get the most value out of their current home. Having the renovation means that we've got less pressure on us to get out of this house, so I think we can make a better decision about the next house. Now they've got all kinds of options. They're making more money just by staying here so they can save up. And they can now sell the house for a lot more because they've gained so much equity by finishing off this basement. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Who knew our basement could look like this? All the pot lights aren't just regular pot lights, they're all insulated pot lights. So this would be pretty attractive to a tenant, that's for sure. Extra things like this solid surface counter. This countertop is gonna last forever. So this will be my bathroom? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> Floor is nice. It's high-end laminate flooring. It does have flexibility, so it adjusts with the unevenness of your basement floor apartment size appliances, and you'd be surprised how many times a $200 dishwasher has sold a place for me. A shaker style door in the kitchen to match the floors. This apartment really has a personality now. Well, it's easy to picture someone living down here and having it like being separate because I can't hear anything up there. What is really fascinating is all the work that's behind these walls and all the thought process that goes into it that's not typical of a regular renovation. The 5 8 drywall is fastened to a resilient channel, right, which suspends it from the floor joists. Then we've got 10 inches of, of rock saw, sound and fire insulation. All that before your apartment. I actually rounded off the bulkhead so there's no sharp edges. Before it was right here in the middle of the room. So I did shift everything over and now you've got a clear path. This is actually a futon. It folds out into a futon or sits up in a couch. Because we got so much room here now, we thought, move the bed in here. Yeah. Instead of your phone being somewhere on the ceiling over there, oh, really? and the cable hanging down over there, oh, wow. it's all in here, all moved into this one box. It 
blends in nicely because it's finished nicely. I did bring a professional appraiser through the house today. I told him you bought the house for $220,000 and now you've put $35,000 into this renovation. Now he said your house should sell today for about $370,000. Job well done, Scott. Hey. <laughs> We could not have done this on our own. We have a new baby and a kid who's been sick for the last month. It, like, it just could not, we could not have done this on our own. Henry, what do you think of the place, buddy? He's like, the couch works. So if I had this place and I was gonna rent it, I would obviously post all the great features about the place. Soundproofed, all new floors, okay? These are great, durable floors. And then you wanna tell them also about Beautiful three-piece washroom.